What's going on, YouTube? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel. I'm Ty. I'm Katie. We're Travel. Travel. And today, we're checking out Spain. Geography now. Let's go. Here we go. for this one me too it's been a while it's since we checked out time. a geography now video it's been like a couple months at yeah, least yeah for real it's been a while yeah so today we're headed to spain yeah and this, we've been getting a lot of suggestions spain. for this one yeah a lot so i'm super excited yeah. for it let's super go excited too. if it's your first time coming across our channel give us a quick subscribe we'd greatly appreciate it we come out with videos every single day we sure do thank you leave us a suggestion too yes comment comment all right ready? let's go all right i'm ready here all we right, go spain i don't really have to say much you've spain. all heard of this country along with france and italy it is one of the three powerhouse latin countries of europe portugal we love you powerhouse and awesome but like let's be real you're kind of like the mini boss before the okay i'll just stop right there anyway we reacted to portugal oh that's right people across the world speak spanish and if you include the mestizos a huge chunk of that population have actual descendants and ancestors from spain so it's not just language it's also like genetically spain got busy and made a big family across the world. In any case, welcome to the original kingpin of the Hispanic world, Spain. All right. What happened? <laughs> oh, it's time to geography, geography now. now. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Don't forget to get Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. So Spain, everything from the freezing glaciers of Patagonia to the freezing glaciers of Alaska have at some point been imprinted upon by the notorious Spanish seal. And of course, it's always great to have people from the country in the country episodes. And with that, here's Jose and Anna. Say hi to Hello, them. Hello everyone. Hi. Oh sweet. All right, so where are you guys from? I'm Anna and I'm from Valencia. I'm Jose and I'm from Catalonia from a town called Blanes. Uh-oh, Valencia, Catalonia, what's going on? <laughs> so, something about paella, we'll, we'll talk see. about that later. <laughs> All right, so shall we uh, comenzamos? No. No? Uh, well, I'll make it up to you guys with some cervezas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Not close. Okay. Si, <laughs> I got it, okay. <laughs> oh my God, you're lucky we're here, because if not, you will be f***ing it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> This is so interesting. This is the first time I've had two hosts on the show at the same time. <laughs> like, we're all like bumping into each other. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, we've covered a lot of countries that have loose forms of administrative division within their political regions, but with Spain, I kind of see it like a teacher with a really rowdy classroom. It's like, hey, you kids, you stop that. Galicia, hey, oh, no. you stop talking to Portugal. Basque and Navarre, I don't know what you're talking about. Rioja, you stop drinking wine. Extra Maduro, do you even exist? Valencia, hey, you stop burning everything right now. How Valencia's trying to jump out the window. What? Oh, scare you little. Uh, no, but for real, the people in Spain just know who they are and they own it. And with that, let's go to the animation. All right, Spain is located in Western Europe, taking up about 82% of the Iberian Peninsula, shared with Portugal to the west, the Bay of Biscay to the north, and to the south, subsections of the Mediterranean, known as the Balearic and Alberon Seas, and inland, the Pyrenees Mountains separate them from France and Andorra. Keep in mind, they even have this small little exclave in France called Yivia, cut off by oh, wow. a Look at that. Six kilometers of space to the Spanish border on the oh, N154 wow. highway. Up north on the Bidasoa River, Spain also shares an island with France called Isla de los Faisanes, or Pheasant Island, in which the sovereignty switches every six months. Those aren't the what? only countries really? that border them, though. In the southeast by La Linea de la hmm. Concepcion, you find this peninsula, Gibraltar, which is actually an overseas territory of the UK that they have had since 1713 with the Treaty of Utrecht. In addition, Spain also has hmm. the Plazas de Soberanía, or strongholds of sovereignty historical places in northern Africa that date back to the inception of modern Spain in the 15th century really? and they hold on to. They include the two exclave autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla, which are effectively attached to Morocco. In addition, there are also eight other islands and one peninsula known as Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera. The peninsula wow, is divided Spain by a 100 meter lot. wide yeah. sand bridge, which makes it one of the shortest international borders in the world. From there, Spain also wow. has two main archipelagos, the Canary Islands off the coast of Morocco, and again, of course, the Balearic Islands islands in the Mediterranean. Due to the positioning of the Canary Islands, this gives Spain two time zones, UTC 0 and plus 1. With that, Spain breaks down a little interesting. The country is classified as a decentralized unitary state in which although sovereignty is vested in one nation, the regional institutions hold their own high degree of self governance and have their own parliaments and presidents. These 17 entities are called autonomous communities or autonomies in short. Ceuta and Melilla are categorized as autonomous cities and have the right to become communities, but so far have not expressed interest in 
doing so. The capital and most populous city and highest capital in Europe is Madrid in the center of the country. Like, literally it is. There's even a floor plaque called the Puerta del Sol, which serves as kilometer zero for all the roads and train oh, wow. networks that radiate outwards from the central hub. And of course, Madrid holds the biggest and busiest airport, Adolfo Suarez, Madrid, Barajas International. From there, the second largest city is Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast, where the second busiest airport can be found, Barcelona El Prat International. From there, the oh, busiest wow. shipping port is the port of Argeciras Bay, where over 100 million tons of cargo pass annually. Finally, fun fact, some oh parts gosh. of Spain are actually antipodes of New Zealand, which means they are literally located exactly across the entire planet from each other. So, fun fact, huh, cool. Canary oh. Island are not named after canaries, but rather dogs because of the Latin can. Which means dogs. Oh. Which means dogs. Like canine. <laughs> that was marginally interesting. <laughs> now, we're not going to dive too much into it because it would take forever, but... Why so many autonomous? Well, historically, Spain had a few major kingdoms before they unified. And this is basically how they separate places. Yeah, that's so interesting. So each one of those areas yeah. has their own, like, laws and stuff. Yeah, I guess so. That's interesting. That yeah. have a very distinct people group versus places that were are more in sync with Madrid's centralized power. And speaking of which it's forced, Spain is a monarchy. Yes, one of the 12 monarchies of Europe. Basically, most people will say <laughs> I it didn't know that. when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins and did not dispensate their marriage, which led them to cursing the Spanish people for all eternity, but then they waited for the next Pope and he dispensated their marriage so anyway the point is after millennia of going through the phoenicians romans the suevi whatever those guys were vandals and alans visigoths the moors and umayyads modernish spain started to take shape in the 1400s with a reconquista or reconquering and from there the story gets crazier how so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? Normally I would be, but all the pictures and the fast meta talk uh, holds my attention and makes me think I'm learning. Thank you for revealing my script writing structure, but anyway, fine, if you insist. <laughs> After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family because that's what they did throughout everybody in Europe. And when their line ended the House of Bourbon, a French dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe VI and his daughter, Princess Leonor, next in line. In any case, Spain is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on Earth wow. after France with more than 83 million people recorded as of 2019. Yeah. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has the most at seven. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites like the Alhambra, the Great Mosque of Cordoba, the Guggenheim, the... Oh. Oh no. What's happening? <laughs> I'm thinking that's where an ad would have been, but now that we have premium. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Is it going weird? <laughs> What's going on? Hang on. <laughs> Let's figure this out. Let's... Here, click play. Oh, no. No! 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 What is going on? Is it what... stopped? What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Okay, let's just try to refresh this. How about that? Okay. <laughs> that's what we'll do. Oh, we have no internet. Yeah. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe that is why. <laughs> All right, come on. Come on now, people. Connect. Okay. All right. Hopefully this does the trick. There we go. Basically, most people will say it all started when Isabella de Castile married Ferdinand of Aragon, unifying the two biggest powerhouses of the Iberian Peninsula. Even though they kind of pissed off the Pope because they were second cousins we and did not dispense <clears throat> their marriage, which led okay. them to cursing the Spanish people for all eternity, but then they waited for the next Pope and he dispensated their marriage. So anyway. The point is after millennia of going through the Phoenicians, Romans, the Suevi, whatever those guys were, Vandals and Alans. Perfect, right where we left off. The Moors yep. and Umayyads, modernish Spain started to take shape in the 1400s with a reconquista or reconquering. And from there, the story gets crazier. 
How so? You sure you're not bored with all this history stuff? Normally I would be, but all the pictures and the fast meta talk uh, holds my attention and makes me think I'm learning. Thank you for revealing my script writing structure, but anyway, fine, if you insist. After the Reconquista, the sexy Habsburgs slipped into the royal family yeah, because they yep. throughout everybody in Europe. And when their line ended the House of Bourbon, a friend's dynasty slipped in. And here we are today with Philippe VI and his daughter, Princess Leonor. Next in line. line. In any case, yep. Spain yep. is a travel hotspot. They are literally the second most visited country on Earth after France, with more than 83 million people recorded as of 2019. It's important to know that Spain has third highest number of UNESCO World Heritage Sites at 48. The Autonomy of Andalusia has the most at seven. Now we all know some of the obvious UNESCO sites. This is very like glitched. The Alhambra, mm -hmm. the Great Mosque, there it Cordoba, goes. the Guggenheim, the Sagrada Familia Church. Which has been under oh, construction wow. for like 130 years. Whoa, it will take look at way that. too long to cover all the UNESCO sites, but here's a list of some non-UNESCO sites you guys suggested we mention in the episode. I've the never Royal heard of Palace UNESCO. Madrid, Centenil de las Bodegas, yeah, Arts and Science Look at that. Wow. Theme parks like Puerto Ventura Whoa. and Puerto Whoa. Oh, that looks and Texas cool. Hollywood. The Canary Islands have pyramids, mummies, and the Neptune statue. The wooden wow. thing in Seville, Metropole Parasol. Madrid claims to have the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world. That's Paris cool. Is in the, the world? City. And fake Look Germany. How beautiful Mallorca that is. And fake UK, Ibiza. And so on. Yeah, that list doesn't even give Spain justice because it's not even a small fraction of the big picture. One part of that picture, though, is the landscape and resources. Which brings us to. All right. Sweet. So since Spain has territories in Africa, the ocean, and Europe, it's transcontinental, so we have like many different landscapes. Like we even have a restaurant that cooks food over an active volcano. But we're getting what? ahead of ourselves, what? let's go to the animation. First of all, for the continental part, the country wow. is incredibly mountainous. In fact, the second most mountainous country in Europe after Switzerland. The country has six main really? ranges, the Betic chain in the I south, the central no. Iberian chains in the center, the Cantabrian and Leon chains in the north, and the Pyrenees in the northwest with the border of France and Andorra. In the center, you have the Meseta Central Plateau, a wide highland that stretches wide across the interior. As you can clearly see from space, the northern part of Spain has the most lush green wet zones, and as you head south, the country obviously gets more dry and arid. In fact, Spain has the only true desert of mainland Europe, the Tabernas Desert, located in Andalusia, which holds the highest temperatures of mainland Europe at over 40 degrees Celsius in the summer. These mountains are essentially a byproduct of Spain being located right at the confluence of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, wow, creating a Slew yeah. of minor rifts and fault lines. This means the southern part of Spain may occasionally experience earthquakes above six on the Richter scale, and certain areas, mostly along the Mediterranean, have extinct volcanoes. The most Ooh, active volcanic scary. area of the country, though, would actually be the Canary Islands, which lie on an interplate volcanic region on the African plate. Oh. Geologists mostly agree that the islands were created by the plates moving over a mantle hotspot, which bubbled up out of the ocean, much wow. like how the wow, yeah. islands were formed. Speaking of islands, the highest point of the country isn't even on the Iberian Peninsula, but rather the Canary Islands, part of the larger subregion known as Macaronesia, with Mount Teide, which is actually the third highest volcano in the world from its base. Back to the mainland, though, the highest mountain on continental Spain would be Mulasen, at nearly 3,500 meters high. From there, the longest river, shared with Portugal, is the Tagus, or Tejo. However, the longest river entirely in Spain is the Ebro. Now, most of the inland bodies of water are reservoirs blocked up by dams on rivers. However, the largest natural freshwater lake would be Lake Sanabria in the northwest. Finally, Spain has three main climate zones on the continent continental part. The areas in the south have a warm, dry Mediterranean climate. The central Meseta Plateau has hot summers and cold winters. And the north Cantabrian mountains have a maritime climate wow. with the most rain year-round Probably a and wide range of animals so all in the yeah. north After to the Marta, south. Spain is the sunniest country in Europe, like 260 days a year. That's hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> now, with all these rugged lands, Spain hosts a wide range of flora and fauna, differing by region. For example, the Canary Islands, you have the Black Sand Beach and the ancient tropical Silva. It's only found in Macaronesia. Otherwise, on the peninsula, you have everything ranging from green hills that look like a Scotland in the north wow. to the rugged rocky Arizona-like deserts of the south. Within these wide-ranged zones, you have tons of natural treasures like caves, canyons, and even a river that flows orange and red. Agriculture-wise, they are the second largest producer of wine after Italy and the largest producer of olive oil in the world. Oh, and fun side note, when they cook, only about 40% of Spanish homes have direct gas lines 
fans installed. And the rest usually have gas tanks delivered, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. bombonas. Delivery. Now we all know oh. that despite wow. having the 13th largest nominal GDP in the world, Spain has had quite a reputation for its rather, how can I put this? Recessive tendencies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, during the financial crisis, Spain was hit hard for about six years during 2008 and in 2014 they reached a height at about 27.2% unemployment. There are a lot of factors wow. that went into this, but it kind of went... How can we grow our economy? Well, we need to build a lot of stuff. Okay. What's the problem? The banks. What if we just let the banks report what they wanted and not regulate them as much? That's a great idea. Nothing could go wrong. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And it did. Perfect storm. And due to this lack of accountability, experts speculate that somewhere upwards to one-fifth of the total GDP is somehow tied in with the undisclosed transaction industry black market, second only to Italy. No proud of that. You guys probably have a lot to say about that. No surprise, Spain? <laughs> Galicia. Is known for being the main port of entry for the European cocaine trade. A fun little fact, did you guys know that over 90% of euros that are transacted in Spain have trace amounts of cocaine on them? <laughs> 90? Like 90? Over 90 percent, yes. There was a study in Valencia's science community. But anyway, oh my god. Wow. Spain is the fifth largest producer of wind energy in the world. We even have the world's largest renewable energy operator, Iberdrola. We are the eighth largest automobile producer in the world and second largest manufacturer in Europe after Germany. We even have some of the domestic brands like Seat, which is actually a subsidiary of Volkswagen, but let them have that one. And the incredibly rare, limited, produce an expensive GTA. That car looks oh, nice. Wow. We're in this country, some of the animal species, and with that, oh, yeah, you were saying that. Yeah, there's probably some crazy reptiles what? down Here in the southern oh, yeah. area. Spain and Italy usually rank in the top two in regarding biodiversity. I mean, they've got tropical forests to desert, so there's lots of wildlife real estate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 16 yeah. national parks, the largest one being the Sierra Nevada in the south. Like Portugal, they share the same type of famous Iberian animals here, like the Spanish ibex and the wild. Wild boar. However, Whoa. they're known for the Spanish Big Five. The bearded vulture, the Iberian lynx, Whoa. the Iberian wolf, the imperial eagle, and the Eurasian brown bear. Wow. The national animal, however, is a bull. And some Whoa. might say the Hispanic lion. Some historians claim that they might have inhabited southern Europe. It's in dispute. Lots of reptiles are endemic too, especially on the island regions. The Canary Islands have about five native species of gecko. Blah, 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 blah. It was a very good impression <laughs> of a gecko. Otherwise, as a country that's in the path of migratory birds from Africa to southern Europe, there's over 630 birds. Oh, flamingos. Speaking of wow. migration, I've got to migrate out here, fading into the distance. Thanks, Gary. Do people now live on the Canary the Islands? I don't know. I wonder. I'm, I'm assuming there has to be some people that live yeah, there. Yeah, or is it inhabited <clears throat> and it's just like mountains and animals. I don't know. But before we do, you have to understand there's a few things. What is food culture in Spain to you guys? What does that mean? What does it entail? Every meal kind of blends into the what following meal. Next one. There's like a whole system, right? <laughs> it starts with breakfast, maybe some churros and chocolate, and then uh, what? Have oh, un aperitivo. And then you have lunch. And lunch normally ends up with what we call sobremesa, that it's like just talk. But you stay at the table. And you stay at the table. You don't have to go out of the, of the bar or even if you're in a house. And then... Merienda which is a little snack we have in the afternoon before dinner. So okay. that's why we have dinner at 10 p.m. It just 10 going. p.m. Never stop. stop. Never stop. We eat and then <laughs> eat again and then maybe go, you know, dancing. What? But while you're dancing, you also eat. You gotta do flamenco <laughs> with some. Probably. Fun fact: Spain is one of the countries in the world that has more bars per citizen. And you can even get beer in McDonald's, right? What? Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was so really. Here. Anyway, what time can they wake that, up? Here's, uh, some food stuff with. Uh, oh, guess who's back? Beer at McDonald's. No. Food. Friday the 15th century Europeans had no idea that things like chocolate, corn, tomatoes, potatoes, avocado and sugar even existed. Through the Spanish trade routes, the rest of the world introduced to these items, and now you can have things like pizza and fries. Great items. In any case, every region of Spain has a different style of cuisine, and the gastronomy is top-notch, world-renowned. We don't have time to explain them all, but some dishes you guys, Spanish geographer peeps, that every Spaniard will most likely have oh, access tapas. to include things like gazpacho, Those are like appetizers. Churros, oh, yeah. coquetas, bachato, cochinillo, arroz oh. a la zamorana, ornato, jamón, Fideuá, Fido, and tortilla. This is not the same as a tortilla in Latin America, though. This is a potato and egg dish. And probably the most mm. world-renowned mm. dish, paella, originated in Valencia. And they are strict with the way that it is made. They hate it when this happens. Hey, can I have 
awesome of that paella. I've heard so much about it. Yeah, sure. It comes with extra mussels and shrimp, because that's paella. <laughs> it does? Yeah. Okay. Sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> The true way to make it is either with rabbit or chicken. Otherwise, Valencians will call all the imposters arroz con cosas, or rice with things. Well, that's all I got for you today. <laughs> Until next time. Don't eat a paella in Madrid or Barcelona. But to eat the real one, go to Valencia. Probably after this, many people is going to want to kill me. I just buried myself. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, sherry was also invented here, as was the Molotov cocktail, which played a huge role in the Spanish Civil the War. What? Let's talk about the Spanish Never people seen now, that. shall we? All right. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different types of people in Spain and they all kind of have their own thing going on. In a way, we have this kind of quiet acknowledgement that unity doesn't mean uniformity. What do you guys think? Like, do you guys generally get along? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but... Yes? <laughs> yes. There's like these stereotypes, things mm. that, oh, he probably is this way because he's from this place, or mm. he's probably, you know? I'll say when I've met Spanish people outside of Spain, we all love Spain and love everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's just when we're in Spain, we love to, you know, talk <laughs> to each other. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, with that, let's talk about the people of Spain in the graph. First of all, Spain has about 48 million people and is the fifth most populous country in Europe and has the highest life expectancy in the OECD countries. The country is made up predominantly by people that identify as native Spaniard at about 88%. Keep in mind, this label is very broad and pretty much pertains to a wide range of people with different physical traits, but mostly with a South European Mediterranean background in their racial makeup. Geneticists also have determined that the average Spaniard, especially in the South, has around 5% North African ancestry due to the Moorish conquests that took over the country for seven centuries. The remaining 12% of the wow. country is made up of seven various centuries. immigrant groups that have settled over the centuries, the largest ones being Latin Americans at about 5%, North Africans and Eastern Europeans at about 2% each, and the remaining 3% from other places around the world like Asia and whatever. All right, so the official language of Spain is shocker. Spanish, but specifically <laughs> Castilian or Castellano Spanish. Yeah, of course we have a uh, Spain Spanish dialect, which sounds a bit different than Latin American Spanish. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, most Latin American Spanish is heavily influenced by the Andalusian dialect of Spanish, as many people from those areas. I think in Spain, don't they pronounce the TH more? Like I Barcelona? So. Yeah. Rather than Barcelona. Who migrated to the Americas. Long story short, what's the easiest way to piss off a Spaniard? Vale, voy a empezar mi nuevo proyecto en mi nuevo ordenador. Elige el idioma inglés. No, francés, no, español. ¿Alguien me puede explicar por qué está español con la bandera de México? Es la bandera Hey, it's not Mexico's fault they became a big deal in the Hispanic world. Anyway, on top of that, despite Spanish being the national language, they have three other regionally co-official languages that are allowed to be publicly used and published alongside Spanish. So we have Catalan, Galician, Basque. But Basque is a language, like it's its old age. It's... Historically, no one knows where it comes from and doesn't have really? anything to do with Latin or any other language. There's also other minority mm. romance wow. languages like Asturianese and Aragonese, but very few people speak them and they don't really pursue to officiate them. And there's other offshoot languages like Ladino, spoken by the Sephardic Jewish community. The coolest language fact though is that on the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands, they use Silbo Gomero, which is taught in schools. It's a language completely composed of whistles. Here's a clip. What? what? <laughs> oh my God. That's so cool. Know that. You didn't even know that. Yeah, oh, we're all learning. Yeah, That's a real thing. That's cool. Wow. For hours, it's crazy, but we gotta move on. Historically, the Catholic faith played a huge role in our uh, identity, despite the fact that today only about two thirds of the country, to some degree, might say that they are very less nominally identify as Catholic. And the less of the 20% of the population goes to church. But for what it's worth, we have the Camino de Santiago, one of the largest Catholic pilgrimages in the world. The interesting thing though is that there is noticeable traces of Moorish Arabic influence as well. Everything from architecture and even the names of cities, for example, if they start with Al. It's even how Andalusia got its name from the Arabic Al Andalus. Oh, wow. And today there's even noticeable words borrowed from Arabic in the Spanish language like Tata or Azúcar. That was right. great. Yeah. 
We got it. Oh, we got it. We got it. Now, in regards to Spain's impact on the world, it's nothing short of massive. At one point, we had 35 colonies across the world. And today, there are 19 sovereign Spanish speaking countries, plus Puerto Rico, that all have a story rooted from Spain. Yeah, you guys have a long history of Latin America. What do they think of what do they think of Spanish people? They love Europe in general. It's like, oh, Europe. So I don't know. But at the same time, they have some other thoughts about that. Like we are lazy. Or... <laughs> a lot of people, especially in South America, that think of us as very structured or like what Spanish people think of Germans almost. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Which is and really exactly. weird for us. <laughs> so they kind of think you guys are like the Germans of the Hispanic world. Yeah. Yeah. But then in Europe, we are like, Bankrupt. Not that. <laughs> Generalizing though, not everyone Generalizing. That, but... but in regards to Spain's, you know, impact on the world, yes, we've heard the stories. Colonialism was riddled in lots of tragedy. Many wars and battles were fought. Many died. Diseases were spread. No denying these terrible historical incidents. But, and this might be one of the most hard pill to swallow controversial things I'll ever say on this show, given the current social climate that we live in, but you have to kind of see colonialism in all vantage points throughout its manifestation. In a weird way, many of the things that you hold dear today and the people that you admire and the ideas that change the world may have never come about without ties to colonialism too. It's a weird paradox of chronological exchanges throughout history. I mean, for example, the wheel and beasts of burden, like horses and cattle, were brought over to the Americas. Remember in the Peru episode, we explained how the only domesticated animal that could remotely help carry cargo was the llama and it could only carry like 80 pounds. Otherwise, people just kind of walked to get around. See, like that. History kind of has a weird way of showing you that nothing ever is completely what you think it is. And over time, it kind of evolves into something you probably never saw coming. Yes, everyone likes to condemn past tragedies, but you also have to acknowledge that it's possible for a rose to grow from concrete. Like the invention of the first artificial heart in Argentina to, I don't know, Vicente Fernandez and Whoa, Shakira. That's my little heart. brief postulation wow. on the topic. Take it as you will. I'm just saying, see before you decree. That was intense. Yeah. yeah. I like, but I like that you said it. In a way, it's hard to judge that era with today's standards and that gets really tricky. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for years and I know what's coming. The Spanish people and our backs story have so many diverse layers and luckily we made a video explaining all about those various groups oh cool oh, we'll screen. have to so check that out yeah right here click on it let's yeah let's chill mm -hmm. a little bit and have some fun let's talk we also have art and sports and many other good things so art with the sports part sweet na, nice na, 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 na. i am existing here's your trophy this is my trophy for existing. I love it. <laughs> but that's besides the point. All right, sports in Spain. So without saying much, most of you will automatically default to football. Yes, we all know that soccer is practically a religion in Spain. Their national team has qualified for the FIFA Cup 15 times, hosted in 1982 wow. and won against the Netherlands in 2010. And of course, everybody knows about the huge rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Which team are you on? But soccer isn't everything for Spain. Fun fact, their men's roller hockey team scored 16 Whoa. gold medals. Everybody knows Rafael Nadal's Wimbledon championship in 2008 and 2010. Their national basketball Whoa. team has won one world and two Euro basket championships. Aside from all the contemporary sports, Spain also has a rich culture of domestically produced sports. Everything from patanque to canary wrestling. I can win it. I bet you I could beat it. I don't know, man. Those things are fast. The Basque country, though, has the most native sports out of anywhere else in Spain. You have things like Jayalai, stone lifting, hole drilling, wood chopping. That's hole my drilling? sport right there. Stone lifting. In fact, Basque Country is where the running of the bulls happens. It's not really a sport. It's more of a festival, but they love it. And there's been 15 wow. sets, but they still love oh. it. And finally, I know you were thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Spanish bullfighting or Corrida de Toro. The sport dates all the way back to Roman times. Bullfighting is kind of seen as a performance art mixed with a sport. The matador attempts to subdue, immobilize, or kill the bull in the arena. The Arabs, the Catholics, the frickin' Bourbons, they all tried to ban it, but it kept coming back. In recent years, the sport has yet again been met with a lot of backlash. In fact, it was completely banned in Catalonia in 2010. Well, I'm gonna get out of here, and you know what? I'm proud of this trophy. Thank you, Art. Yeah, people in Spain are pretty active. Which is actually uh, kind of funny considering that you guys have that whole siesta culture thing, and you guys are known for being lazy, like, oh, oh come gosh. on. But I love it. I haven't, I haven't taken a siesta in two years. Yeah, but that's because yeah. you live here.
No, but we're, I mean, <laughs> we are not lazy guys, okay? Also, siesta doesn't make you lazy. It recharges oh, you. Doesn't recharge you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up more than you went to sleep. Wow, that's only in Valencia. Be wild. That's only in Valencia. Oh, and speaking of stereotypes, what about the whole like nudity thing? I thought that that was something normal in the rest of the world. Oh. On the beach, on the beach. No one pays attention to that. Like, it's yeah. no anything weird, but we don't go naked through the street. Like. Right, right. So, in conclusion, <laughs> stereotype debunked. Nudity is not legal in Spain, but it's okay in some beaches. All right, enough culture talk. Now we gotta move on to Hannah. That's her segment. So now here's Hannah with culture stuff. Hi guys, it is good to be back. And remember that you can get a random Hannah t-shirt at geographynow.com. It has my face, face, it has my face on it. And it's better than Keith. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway once said, there is no nightlife in Spain. They stay up late and they get up late. That is not nightlife. That is delaying the day. Interestingly enough, they have one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Maybe nightlife wow. will do the trick. In any case, Spain has been a front runner in arts and literature. So many people like these have made internationally Whoa, famous yeah. pieces of literature. None more famous than Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. In addition, so many world-renowned artists have come from Spain, including the Spanish Trinity, Pablo Picasso, Diego oh, Rosa, wow, yeah. and Francisco Goya. He has some really dark works because he went uh, deaf and the Spanish Inquisition really hated it. But of course, you cannot forget Anthony Gaudi's architecture and surrealist oh my Salvador gosh. Dali. Oh, Dali, buried yeah. buried in his own museum. Literally my favorite artist of all time. Spain is a hub of many inventions, such as the spacesuit, the stapler, the predecessor to the helicopter, the gyroplane, the wheelchair, glasses, foosball, and the discovery wow. of the elements, tungsten, vanadium, and platinum. Now, just very quickly, let's talk about some cinema stuff. Explore the political climate with movies like Pan's Labyrinth, which is actually a Mexican movie but does explore some aspects of Spanish culture and the Spanish Civil War. Take a tour of a beautiful Basque country by watching the movie Ocho Apaidos Vascos. I hope I'm saying that right. Is that right? Good enough. If you want to take a trip back to the <laughs> Middle Ages and explore Spain's royalty culture, you can watch Juana la Loca. And everybody knows the famous actresses that came out of Spain like Antonio Banderas, Penelope oh, yeah. Cruz, Javier Bardem. Anyways, you get the point. There is a way too much film history to get into right now but if you want to learn more watch filmography now guys the first official spin-off channel of geography now and it has a spin-off <laughs> and finally spain is the land of festivals literally every day you can Whoa, find some, wow. in some part of spain you've probably heard of la tomatina la faria in april semana santa and la tomatina what is that, that? is music. Unfortunately, Keith has made his way back from Florida to Los Angeles. I don't know what to do with myself. I thought he was gone forever and he's freaking back. It's here to do the music segment. You guys kind of like him, so <laughs> here he is. Whatever. Have fun. All right, music. I'm back. I'm back in the studio. My segment kicks not her segment. By the way, everybody, over the years, I've worn Rush shirts many times. Everybody knows Rush is my favorite band. Blah, 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 Rush. Don't sue, whatever. Anyways, so fun fact, and since I have such a love affair with guitars and things with strings, especially G strings, haha, <laughs> but um... <laughs> <laughs> the modern classical guitar was actually invented in Spain. This is actually a steel oh. string. Spain is one of the very few countries that actually has no words in their national anthem. Each region of Spain actually has Ooh, its really? own wow. traditional style of music. The most well-known style of music that everybody around the world probably knows is flamenco music. Predominantly founded in the southern region of Spain and mostly the city of Seville. Highly recommend ch checking out Paco de Lucia, who's a phenomenal flamenco guitar player. Player. I would have to explain flamenco music as a finger style on guitar. So, Ooh. for example, we'll have to check him out. Yeah. Guitar, if you take cool. these two, or sorry, these three fingers and you anchor your thumb, you kind of do this motion here. You can also, you like, use your right hand as a kind of more percussive. In addition, most regions in Spain actually have their own style of dance, which is called the Jota. The rhythms in the dance either are three, four, or six, eight. It's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's basically the same thing. It feels faster, but it's not actually faster. Eventually, 
after the fall of the dictatorship, you had a bunch of amazing musicians come out, such as Rocio Jorado, La Pantoja, Joaquin Sabina, Rosalia. She's won like a bunch of Grammys. I don't know. It's just like whenever I watch some like Latin soap opera or something, and I put the chick in the big dress, and he cheated on me. And then I'm just all like, whoa. So that's it for me, you guys. I would just like to say thanks to Paul Barbato for flying me out to here to LA. So glad to have you back, Keith. Oh my God, it's Woo! great to be back. Woo. I missed in and out and all of the glorious fast food that is in LA. Woo! Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, it's time to move on to the friend zone, shall we? The friend Sweet. zone. Dun, dun. All right, so Jose, Dana. Anna, how do you feel about the way how Spain interacts with the rest of the world? Because of the language, I feel like we might feel closer to Latin American countries for the most part. People think that we are not that good at English. And okay, I probably have shown in this video that I'm not that good at English. I'm sorry, I just no, had a long great. day, okay? You're doing great, you're okay? doing great. It's harder for us because we are, come from a Latin language. Yeah. Yeah. So a German person is gonna be able to understand and learn faster English than yes. us, so... Obviously, Spain has a huge impact on the world. So first off, of course, in Africa, it's interesting. The area of Western Sahara used to be a Spanish colony, which is now de facto run by Morocco, but with a dispute with the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Although Spain has never formally recognized the SADR, Spain does host a noticeable community of Sahrawi people on the Canary Islands, and on top of that, the whole... Okay, oh, so people do live in yeah. Yeah. Morocco, just a bit to say the least. Nonetheless, they try to keep things cordial, and every new prime minister usually makes a trip to Morocco for their first diplomatic mission abroad. Otherwise, they have hmm. very close relations with their former colonies. The closest probably being Argentina, as they have the largest diaspora of Spaniards outside of Spain with almost half a million. And it's well known wow. throughout the Latin world that Argentina probably has the biggest crush on Spain, so the more they get time with them, the better. Cuba and Venezuela <laughs> are high up on the list too, Cuba being the last American colony to gain independence, and they have always been fond of Spain's values. Venezuela specifically has very close ties to the Canary Islands. They even speak almost with the exact same accent, and half of everybody on the islands have friends or family in Venezuela. Back to Europe though, Andorra is like the Beverly Hills where the Spaniards move when they hit it big and want to hide their money. However, if we're gonna get really personal, Portugal is like the little brother they have shared every moment of their history with. And they love to see him try. Uh -huh. Like whenever Portugal accomplishes anything, Spain is their number one cheerleader. Like Spain knows they are four times bigger and have a way heavier socioeconomic impact on Europe and the world. So of course, let adorable Portugal have a Ronaldo or Magellan. They deserve some spotlight. Spain can't have it all. When it comes to their best friends, however, literally almost every single Spaniard I have talked to has said the same country, Italy. It's no shocker. When a Spaniard and Italian meet, there is an instant connection. They just share the same South Latin vibe and code of conduct that goes back millennia to the Roman Empire. They can easily learn each other's languages. They approve of the other's food and music. They both laugh at stories of crazy dictatorships and underground <laughs> mafia drama over a glass of wine. In the end, evidently, Spain and Italy are the kings and queens of South Europe. All right, and and there you go. Mm. Yeah, didn't they say like it was number two and number one in wine? Yeah. We are welcoming and um, the cool thing about Spain is like you have many different cultures within the same country, so you can live completely different experiences. We like to party. That, I'm not gonna say no. Wrong with that. We love that. Because we are social people. I yeah. think that's something that we need. A lot of those things I took for granted being in Spain, the rich diversity yeah. or, you know, welcoming nature. And once I moved out, which more than 10 years ago, that's when I really started realizing yeah. how lucky we are to be from Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have some real paella. And <laughs> real paella. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you guys so much for being in this episode. And with that, stay tuned. Sri Lanka is coming up next. Sweet. Nice. Oh, we saw that one. Oh, yeah. Sri, Sri Lanka. Lanka. That was a good one. That was wow. a great one. Spain. Yeah. Really interesting. I never realized how, like, this beginning, how um, different the whole, like, let's see if it pulls up here. All the different, like, terrains, like, mountainous yeah, and it, so much green. Yeah, I didn't realize the land all was, the like, desert. Yeah. was like that. Me neither. Like, it, you have everything ranging from green here. hills. Yeah, like, like, like this. this. Yeah. Like, I would have never guessed this was Spain. If yeah, pulled this picture no. up. I would and, think like Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like just the rolling green hills. That's yeah, beautiful. I just thought it was like all big city life. You know? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot in there. Yeah. All the animals. Yeah, the dancing, the movies, yeah. the art, the film. That was great. Yeah, it was a great episode. I really episode. enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, same. I want to watch that video about um the different uh alliance. What was it? I don't know. The different allies or. Oh, yeah. That Autonomies. <laughs> Autonomies, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's Spain. a bunch of them. That would be really cool. Yeah. That'd be a good video. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in because they were saying that there's different dialects within Spain, like off Spanish mm -hmm. or different languages like 
Catalan. Oh, yeah, there was I one. Know. I wonder how different that is to Spanish. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, we've learned Spanish, mm-hmm. but the different is it, like, dialects. like, completely different? Right, yeah. Or... Like, would we understand it or not? Hmm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Interesting. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video, what we need to check out next, and if you're watching this in Spain right now, let us know. Say yeah, hello. Yeah, let us know. And yeah. thank you so much for watching this video. And if it's your first time coming across our channel and checking out one of our videos, please give us a quick subscribe. Hit that notification bell to stay up to date because we come out with videos every, every single, single day. day. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See ya. See ya.